Hello dear students and uh, good morning once again this is your teacher Wilman. Well I'm here because um, we're going to continue studying. We're going to continue working on summit number two. This time um, we're gonna start working on unit number seven. So unit number seven um, is about a topic that is kind of interesting for some people. We're gonna talk about illusions. Well, that's what the first vocabulary input shows. And you know that in this first part, we're gonna basically talk about vocabulary and grammar. But this time we're gonna include um, some, we're going to include some, some things about pronunciation. It's not something that I'm going to teach you, it's something that you already know. So we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna have like a brief uh, overview about it. We're gonna remember some things, okay? So that's what we're gonna basically do, okay? So let's get started. So uh, the name of the unit is Mind Over Matter. So unit number one, as you can see, that's part one. Because that's the part that we're gonna be working, which is which is like grammar and vocabulary and some things about pronunciation. And then I I'll have to make another video. Okay, good. So we're gonna start with a video. I'm gonna show you a video. Well, you're gonna see some pictures. It's it's gonna talk about illusions. Okay, you're gonna see some pictures and you're gonna think about the things that you can see first. Okay, and then it'll it'll show you your personality based on that thing that you could see okay so let's let's watch it one what do you see first a frog most people see a frog right away if this is about you then you have a straightforward personality you try to be honest and direct with others no matter what you're perceived as confident, trustworthy, and reliable. There are no hidden messages in your words, which is why people can trust your opinion and advice. A horse. Not so many people manage to spot a horse from the get-go. If you still can't see it, try tilting your head to the left. There you go. What a beauty, right? Those whose attention is first drawn to the horse are thoughtful individuals. If you're one of them, you have an analytical mind. You don't take things for what they seem to be. You have a critical approach to life and prefer to reach your own conclusions about a situation. Number two, what do you see first? Three bears. If the first thing that caught your eye was three big gray bears, you have an analytical way of thinking. You prefer a logical and stepwise approach to solving problems. You try to break an issue up into separate parts. This helps you understand the main problem and solve it efficiently. Mountains. If you saw mountains first and only then recognize that they look like bears, your style of thinking is intuitive. You often rely on your gut feeling and it rarely lets you down. You use your experience to solve problems fast and efficiently. You can notice common patterns in different situations and they help you figure out the necessary solutions. Number three. What did you see first? Two squirrels on a tree branch. In this picture, most people immediately notice a couple of squirrels sitting on a tree branch. These are the types of individuals who can see the big picture effortlessly. If you're one of them, your abilities help you correctly assess situations at first sight and thus solve subsequent problems efficiently. A woman's face. Very few people manage to see a woman's face at all, let alone notice it at first glance. If you still can't find the face, tilt your head to the left. One squirrel will turn into the woman's lips and the other into her eye. However, if the face was the first thing you saw in the picture, congrats! You're a unique individual with outstanding observational skills. This can help you in both your work and your social interactions with others. Number 4. What did you see first? A man with a pair of binoculars. You're a person who prefers to concentrate on the big picture if the first thing you spotted in this image was a man holding a pair of binoculars. Several glances are enough for you to collect all the information you need. That's why you aren't a big fan of thorough analysis. A car. 
if you instantly saw a car, your coworkers and friends must appreciate your ability to notice fine details. You like when everything goes according to a detailed plan. At the same time, you may occasionally overanalyze things, which can prevent you from making quick decisions. The letter A. Are you one of the very few who noticed the letter A first of all? If so, then your strong intuition is enviable. On top of that, you're a person who always suggests creative ideas and non-standard solutions. Number 5. What did you see first? Two faces. If the first thing you paid attention to was a couple looking at each other, then you're a romantic at heart. You really value the people in your life. Love and understanding mean a lot to you. Not to mention, you have a positive and friendly personality. Your inborn reasoning abilities can calm down even the most nervous or agitated people. A tree. If your attention was instantly drawn to a tree, you're the type who occasionally needs to be on their own. You love nature and solitude, but don't mind spending time with your loved ones as well. Besides, you're a tactful person who avoids hurting others' feelings by all means. Number 6. What did you see first? A girl's face. If you're one of those who notice the face of a young woman, you're always aware of your surroundings. What's more, you see patterns around you, and this helps you draw the right conclusions and make correct assessments. Flowers. If you saw only flowers in this image, you probably really love nature. You appreciate the world around you, but also manage to get away from the everyday hustle and bustle when you need to. Number 7. What do you see first? A mouse. If you spotted a mouse first, you're an optimist. You prefer to look for advantages in every situation. You sometimes might not be practical enough, and people often say that you have your head in the clouds. But, in fact, you're well aware of the world around you. You simply prefer to concentrate on its bright sides. A cat. If you saw a cat as soon as you glanced at this picture, you're a realistic person. You know what you need from life, and you don't naively build castles in the air. You see the world as a whole, and this helps you plan your subsequent actions. Number 8. What do you see first? A woman looking out the window. If you notice the woman looking out the window first, you may tend to overlook dangers. You might even risk your life without realizing it. You're sometimes too spontaneous and a bit naive. That's why you may often find yourself unprepared for unpleasant consequences. A skull. Was it a skull that you first noticed? If so, then you're a realist rather than an idealist. You probably come off as a bit cynical to people who don't know you well enough. But your line of thinking is simply that all good things may come to an end one day. Number 9. What do you see first? A man playing the saxophone. If the first thing your eyes landed on was a man playing the sax, then you're left-brained. This means that your forte is analytical thinking. You're also good at numbers and languages. Your friends often ask you for advice because your logic helps solve any problem. A woman's face. If you first notice the face of a woman, you're a right-brained individual. And since your right hemisphere is more developed than the left one, your main trait is creativity. You use different forms of art to express yourself. Besides, you have a high level of emotional intelligence. And your imagination helps you deal with problems in an outside-of-the-box type of way. Number 10. What do you see first? A squirrel. If the first animal you saw was a squirrel, this means that the left side of your brain is more developed. Again, this hemisphere is responsible for logical and analytical thinking, as well as mathematical skills. A duck. If you notice the duck, the right hemisphere of your brain is dominant. This means that you're really good at everything connected with arts and creativity. Number 11. What do you see first? A seal. If you notice the seal in this picture, your attention to details is astonishing. Your logic is sound, and it can help you out in any argument. You're great at calculations and mathematics. On top of that, your analytical abilities help you master languages with ease. A donkey. You're a highly intuitive person if the first thing you saw in this picture was a donkey. 
You value your freedom and prefer to work without any supervision. You often anticipate something that may happen to you. When you make plans, you consider all alternatives and opt for the best one. Did you learn anything new and unexpected about yourself? Tell us about your results in the comments below. Okay, so as you can see here, it was like, like a test based on illusions. So, and it was like, it was like describing your personality the way you are, depending on the things that you could see, like at a glance or, or the things that you could analyze first. So, guys, we're going to start with the vocabulary for this unit. And we're going to start with some expressions, some words, some phrasal verbs, the meaning of them, okay, that maybe you don't know. For some of them, you might, you might have heard, but it's okay. So we're going to start with this first one, which is come on in. Okay, here is a, let me use a pointer. Here is a, a simple way to, to see this picture. No need to knock, come on in. So no need to knock, knock on the door, just come on in. She is friendly request to enter one's house and some other place. So as example, come on in. We have a place at the table ready for you. It's like someone someone is requesting to get inside the place and you say, yeah, come on in, come on in, come on in, Let's continue in. She's inside. Okay. So that's the first expression that we're going to have for today. The second one is what's on your mind? Okay. What's on your mind basically is a question that means... What are you thinking about, okay? So for example, maybe you see someone is like meditating, someone is like thinking about something and then you arrive and say, uh, what's in your mind, okay? What are you thinking about? You're not, example says, you're not focused at all on the topic, what's in your mind, okay? It's a question. The next one, we have to have the distinct impression or we say in English to have a hunch. Okay, what is to have a hunch? The pronunciation of this word is hunch. Okay, look at the examples here. It says, what are other words for have a hunch? And, and it answers like feel, sense, suspect, have a feeling, think, guess, surmise, suppose, presume, and get impression. Okay, so basically it means to have a strong intuitive feeling about someone or something. For example, I can't explain it. I just have a hunch that Maggie's pregnant. I have a hunch. It's like I, like I have a feeling, like, like I, I think, but, but it's not only thinking. It's something that I can feel. Okay. Good. The next expression is huddle together. Okay. Here is a pronunciation huddle. You know this is a show as well, but it is a stressed, and this is unstressed. We say huddle, huddle. Had all together. Why do penguins had all together? It says to come together in a small group. So basically, the definition. Example: uh, It was so cold that we had to had all together. So when you had all together is when you join in small groups. Okay. So for example, we're gonna let's say that we're gonna we're gonna make role play. So I need some people to huddle together in order to make some groups to start practicing the role play. Okay. It's just a random example. The next one is cubicle. Cubicle, it's what you can see in this picture. It's a small compartment that's for workers study. So examples, cubicles help workers organize and focus on their tasks. Yeah, because like, you know, when you're in the compartment, it just, it's, it's just you and the tasks that you have to do and you're like more focused. So the pronunciation is Cubicles, okay, cubicle. Good. The next one it says, talk behind your backs. So it says, don't worry about those who talk behind your back. They're behind you for a reason. Okay, it says, the definition says, the act of talking bad about someone when they're not present. Example, John, I overheard Jessica talking behind your back. She was saying you're such a, such a gazi guy. Yeah, I overheard it's like when you when you pass somewhere and you coincidentally hear people talking about I don't know any topic. Then you overheard and the person would say over here. Okay, so behind your back, which is 
talk bad about someone when they're not present. Next expression, it says it sounds paranoid or to be paranoid. Para paranoid. Okay? That's the pronunciation. Paranoid. Extremely suspicious or afraid of other people. But but uh, this is especially when let's say when someone is supposing something, he or she is unsure about something and then she's like, yeah, they for example in this picture, this girl is like worry or extremely suspicious or of afraid or afraid of what the other co-workers are talking about. So maybe she's like, What what are they talking about? Are they talking about me? Maybe did I did I do something really bad? So she she's just like paranoid. Okay. So example, Felicia says, they always huddle together. They're they're surely talking behind my back. And Charles says, that sounds paranoid, Alicia. Take it easy. It's like, don't think about it. You're just like exaggerating. Don't be like that. Next word is, don't get me wrong. It says, make sure that someone does not get any, any correct idea about what you're doing or saying. Yeah, in the example, it says, I mean, don't get me wrong. Joanne is my best friend, but she can be kind of a pain in the neck sometimes. Yeah, it's like, I don't want you to misunderstand what I'm going to tell you, but I think that this and this and this. So you say, don't get me wrong. Okay, good. The next expression is to let the cat out of the bag. Well, to let the cat out of the bag basically means to reveal a secret. For example, how did mom find out we were planning a surprise party for her? So it says, who let the cat out of the bag? Like who told who said the secret? Who told the secret? Who was the the person who revealed the secret that we were preparing a, a surprise party for? It? So that's basically what let the cat out of the bag means. Next expression says, well, again, we have again here. The first meaning of this word is an organized group of criminals as you can see in this picture the block in united states so um well it's basically that a group of criminals and they are really organized and they start like like committing a lot of crimes so that's called a gang the, the group of criminals that's a gang okay and we also have it here in colombia well around the world we have gangs everywhere. Okay, the second meaning of this for gang, it's a group of a group of laborers organized together on one job or under one four person. Yeah. It's like a group of people together to to perform a specific task or to do something at work then we call it we call it a gang. Okay, so yeah, as he says, a group of laborers organized together on one job or under one under one four person. So we we also use gang when we want to refer to a group of friends. That's my gang. Okay, it, or let's say the gang the gang got together again, like you were like like you were in a meeting or something like that or or i need again here to to hang out or something like that. we just sometimes use gang that way like a group of people a group of friends okay good the next one is a a phrase of her which is to gang up on which is to join together in opposition or attack for example look at the picture here so he says, the old children were always ganging up on the little ones. In this case, it's like bullying, okay? It's like when, you bull, when you're bullying someone, so gang up on. But it's not only bullying, it's, it's like the next one, pay attention. Like gang together. If people gang together, they form a group in order to do something together, especially to oppose something. So in example, it says, people will gang together to destroy them. Or as you can see here, there is a girl who is like on a strike. It says, Cedars of St. Joseph of 
cannon led. I think oppose the death penalty. So you're ganging up on on opposing a topic or you're ganging together. Okay. Good. So if we're gonna go to the grammar part here. Okay, what are we gonna learn about grammar? Well, this is the this is like the the agenda that we're gonna follow. We're gonna talk about articles and we're gonna see what's the difference between a, a, n, and the. Number two, when do we use a and a, n? Number three, when do we use the? Number four, specific the cases. Number five, plural and uncountable nouns with and without the. Number six, geographical use of the. And number, number seven, proper nouns with and without the article. And number eight, well, finally, pronunciation. But as I told you, uh, we're not going to learn something new. We're going to just basically review something that you already know, okay? Just for you to remember the rules, some rules about pronunciation. So, first of all, difference between A, A, N, and the. Okay, first of all, I want, I want you to pay attention here. It says, we use A, A, N when we talk about something for the first time. First time you talk about something. And we use the when something that was already mentioned. Look at the example here, the one that is here. It says, for lunch I had a sandwich and an apple. The sandwich wasn't very good. So this the speaker, the speaker says a sandwich, an apple, because this is the first time he talks about him. And in the second case, like here, it says, the speaker says the sandwich because the listener or the person who's talked to, to the other to the other guy it says the listener now knows which sandwich he means the sandwich he had for lunch okay so in more examples it says yesterday I bought a car and a motorcycle okay I say a car and a motorcycle because it's the first time I'm introducing the objects this is the first time that I mention it and then I say the car is blue and the motorcycle is white. Okay, in this second case, I say the car and the motorcycle because you already know the objects that I'm talking about. Okay, it's not this is for the first time, and this is when when the thing was already mentioned here. Okay, so it's like it's like it's like an example that I always tell my students. Like, for example, when you say when you ask the, the following question, did you receive a letter? If you ask, did you receive a letter? It means that you didn't know about the existence of the letter. Okay, did you receive a letter? Whatever letter, it's the first time that you talk about it. We we don't know about the existence of the letter. But if I say, did you receive the letter? Then you know what letter I'm talking about because we're talking about the letter, not a simple letter, but a specific letter, okay? So that's basically the difference between these two articles. Okay, we're gonna practice. We're gonna practice. I'm so sorry here it says a woman, I don't know what happened here. Maybe when I was organizing all this. So here is an example. It's well there are three exercises that I want you to think about. You can start the video and you can do them. Just think about the answers. You have to fill out the blanks with an article, okay? So it's basically that. So start the video, do them, and then we can continue. Okay. So we're going to continue. We're gonna see the we're gonna see the answers, which are these ones. Okay, in the first one we say there was a man, because it's the first time that we talk about a man, talking to a woman outside my house. So I am firstly identifying the people I'm talking about. So I say a man and a woman outside my house. The man, because this is the second time that I mentioned a man, looked American, and I think the woman was the Indian, because this is the second time, okay, that I mentioned this. But I already know who I am talking about. So in number two, it says, when we were on vacation, we stayed at, we stayed at, you remember this? What I told you, stayed at, stayed at a hotel, because this is the first time that I'm mentioning the place where we stayed. In the evenings, 
sometimes we had dinner at the hotel because it's the second time that I mentioned this, this topic and sometimes in a restaurant because it's the first time that I introduced in a restaurant. Number three says, I saw a movie last night. First time I mentioned, the second time I say, the movie was about a soldier and a beautiful woman. The soldier was in love with that woman and the woman was in love with the teacher. Because why do we say a teacher here? Because it's, a, it's another character that we're introducing, okay? So the soldier shot that teacher and married the woman, okay? So as you can see here, we can easily identify when the first when we talk about something the first time and then when we mention again something that was previously introduced or mentioned for the first time. So let's continue with the explanation. Now, how do we use A and AN? Well, first of all, I want you to read this. It says, we use A or AN when the listener doesn't know which thing or people we are talking about. It's like when, we, when you introduce the, the thing or, or, or the, the, the object that you want to talk about. So look at the first example, it says, we're gonna, we're gonna like, like, like compare, okay? In the number one, it says, Tom sat down on a chair. If I say on a chair, well, it is, it's not a particular chair, okay? I'm just introducing where he is sat down. It's like, it's like I want the listener to know the topic for the first time. So in the second one, it says, Tom sat down on the chair I bought yesterday. But pay attention here. We say the chair I bought yesterday that in this case, it's very specific, it's not general. We are talking here, when we use the article, the, we're talking about something that is particular. What chair? The chair I, or oh, sorry, which chair? The chair I bought yesterday, okay? The chair I bought yesterday was the one that Tom used to sit down, to, to sit down, sorry. So we say Tom sat down on the chair I bought yesterday. Okay, the second example, it says, Anne is looking for a job, for a job, whatever job. And in the second one, we say, did Anne get the job she applied for? So in this case, I say the job because I'm being specific. This is very particular. I'm talking about the job that she applied for. In number three, it says, do you have a car? Okay, I'm just, it's just a simple question. Do you have a car? It's 12 o'clock. But in the second one, I say, I cleaned the car yesterday. So if I say I cleaned the car, it maybe it's my car, okay? But we both know w which car we are talking about, okay? That's basically the difference. We use A or AN when we want to talk about something that the listener doesn't know, okay? Or the people that the listener doesn't know that we are talking about. So remember that we use A, a just A, when we when the next word starts by a consonant sound and we use a n when the next word starts by a vowel sound okay so here we we continue we go how to use the look at here it says the use of the we use the sorry when it is clear in the situation which thing or people we mean when it's very clear so we have to use the because we are talking about something that is particular okay so let's say in my bedroom I say turn on the lights in this case I don't say turn on a light because it's not it's not a general light let's say it's something that is particular turn on the lights which lights the lights in my bedroom that's why I use the number two pick up the phone so the one the one it's ringing so pick up the phone the phone the one that is ringing okay Number three, I enjoy the movie. At a movie theater, what movie? Which movie, sorry? The movie that we were watching some minutes ago. So I enjoyed the movie. Or for example, if you say, I enjoyed the movie we saw yesterday. It's also a good example. It's, it's also a good compliment because I'm being particular. I'm being specific, sorry, with, with the movie that we watched. Number four, where is the restroom? At a building, where is a restaurant? I'm talking about an, a specific restaurant, which is the one that is in the building. So I say, where is the restaurant? It's like if you were 
at home and you say, where's the bathroom? Where's the bathroom? I'm talking about um, my home's bathroom. So that's what we use that for. When we want to be specific, when we want to be particular, when we want, sorry, when we want to mention a particular thing, okay? So pay attention to this box here. It says, we also say the bank, the post office, the police, the dentist, the doctor, the hospital, the army, and the fire department. Those are some nouns with which we have to use the article the, okay? So don't forget them. And just, it's the only way to, to remember this is to learn them by heart, okay? So the next one, we're gonna practice. It says, you're going to complete here using the or using an or, or a. I would like, number two, could you close, please? And number three, we live in a, sorry, I already said that, but we live in small apartment near center of town. You know that it always happens to me. Number four, have you finished, have you finished with book I lent you last week? Number five, did police find who stole, person who stole your, your bicycle? Okay, good. So I want you to think about it. You can start the video and you can practice. It's very recommendable to start the video. I know that sometimes it's kind of like, I'm no, sorry. It's like, sometimes it's like, it's like boring, but well, you can do it here. You don't have to write down anything. Just think about it. Okay, so, so here, here are the answers. Number one, would you like an apple? Okay, because I'm, I'm we're, t we're not talking about the apple. We're not talking about a particular apple. We're just talking about an apple. If you want an apple. Number two, could you close the door, please? We, we cannot say, could you close a door? Because when you say close the door, you're talking about a particular door. That's the door that I want you to close. So could you please, or could you close the door, please? Number three, we live in a, as I told you, in a small apartment near the center of town. Okay, good. Number four, we say, have you finished the book I lent you last week? So, w which book am I talking about? I'm talking about the book I lent you last week. So, I'm talking about a particular book, okay? Number five, did the police, by the way, remember that we don't say did, we say did. Did the police find the person who stole your bicycle? Did the police... So in this case, remember that we, in English, we say the police find the person. I'm talking about a particular person because this is the person who stole your bicycle, okay? So we say, did the police find the person who stole your bicycle? So I hope it's clear. Anyway, if you have uh, any other question, you can just ask, okay? Uh, I'll be answering all your questions. So, specific cases for the article the. So, in this case, I need, uh, I want, I want, I want to show you, like, like some specific cases or some rules that we in English we we all, we will always have. Okay, some cases in which we will always have to use uh, the article the for it. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna upload a material. In my English lab so that you can download it and check it out. It's the same material that we're gonna see right now but so I, I think that it's better if you have it on your computers or if you print it out okay so we're gonna open it for a moment here look at this one okay this is the example I just gave you some exercises here and there was a so wait a Wait a minute. Oh my God, I'm having troubles with that. Okay. This one and this one here. Okay. So, pay attention. Those are some specific cases in which we use the article the. Okay, we say the when there is only one of something. For example, when we say, what is 
the longest river in the world. So there is always one longest river in the world. There is only, okay, only one, the one that is the longest, okay? Number two, we went to the most expensive restaurant in town. Okay, there is only one most expensive. Number three, the only television program she watches is the news. This is the only one that she watches. Paris is the capital of France because capital because France only has one capital, which is Paris. Next one, everybody left at the end of the meaning. There is only one end. The earth, there is only one earth, goes around the sun. There is only, okay, in this case it's because we say in English, the moon, the world, the universe, we say the sun, okay, the sun of the earth. Okay, there is only one sun, one sun in, in our solar system, but there are many moons. But when we say the moon, we're talking about the, we're talking about the earth's moon, okay? So we say the sea, the sky, the ground, the city, the country. Would you rather, would you rather, sorry, live in the city or in the country? Or don't sit on the ground, it's wet. We looked up at all the stars in the sky. We say go to sea, be at sea, without the. When the meaning is go or be on a, on a voyage. So we say Ken is a seaman. He spends most of his life at sea. But I would love to live near the sea. So in this case, we say the sea because we're talking about just the now. But in the first one, spends most of his life at sea because we we mean like go like like be on a voyage okay we say space not the space when we mean space in the universe we say there are millions millions of stars in space not in the space but he tried to park his car but the space wasn't big enough we're just talking about an empty place that we want to use okay so let us see movies movies theater radio and television we say the movies the theater we went to the movies last night or do you often go to the theater know that we know that when we say the theater we do not necessarily mean one particular theater we say i choose the theater did you often go to the theater okay not not a particular one okay so we usually say the radio we often listen to the radio or i heard the news on the radio but we usually say television without the we don't say we often watch the television we say we just we just say we often watch television or i watched the news on television we don't say the, the television but can you turn off the television but the television said okay but I think that in this case, we just want to refer to, to a particular television. So that's why we use the article here. Okay, for meals, for meals, look at here. So we say, we, didn't, we don't normally use the, with the names of meals. We say, what time is lunch? We didn't say, what time is the lunch? We say, what time is lunch? We had dinner in a restaurant. What did you have for breakfast? Or and invited me to? Or for dinner, but we don't say to the dinner for the dinner. No, no. With meals, we don't use the article. Okay, that's some mistake that some students do. And I can say that oh, I had the dinner at seven. No, no, we had dinner at seven. Or I'm going to have the lunch. No, I'm going to have lunch. Okay. So, but we say a meal. We say we had a meal in a restaurant. But we also say a when there is an adjective before lunch and breakfast. And very fast, sorry. Of course, we say thank you. That was a very nice lunch. Yeah, because I'm, I'm being like like a specific. Okay, I'm an, an, and I'm also using an adjective. I say thank you. That was a very nice lunch. Or thank you. That was a very delicious breakfast. That was a really healthy lunch, for example. Not that was a very nice lunch. No, when we use when we use an adjective. And a noun, it just, we usually use a. Okay, good. Those are the first specific cases. So I repeat again 
when we say that when there is only one thing, as I told you, we say the sea, the sky, the ground, the city, the country. But when we imply like going, going there or going to to some to some of these places, we just go, we just say go to sea, be at sea, or yeah, like here in this example, it says he spends most of his life at sea. So in this case, we don't use the because we're just implying like the meaning of going or beyond a voyage, okay. So we say, and we also say space when we talk about the universe, but we say the space when we talk about an empty place, okay? So like, like in a parking lot, like you, can, you want to park your car in that, in that space. Okay, we say movies, theater, radio, and television. And with television, we, we don't use the article unless you're talking about television sets. And we always use the radio, okay? or we say the theater or the movies, okay? For meals, we never use the article the. The only one that we use is the article A, but it's when we have an adjective, a nice lunch, a healthy uh, dinner, or something like that, okay? Those are some exercises that I want you to, I want you to do, okay? And we might check them, good. So I'm gonna upload this material on my English lab. Okay, the second, the second part of this, the cases. Study these ends. The rose is my fairy flower, or the giraffe is the tallest of all animals. In these examples, the doesn't mean one particular thing. It says the rose, roses in general, or the giraffe, giraffes in general. We use the plus a singular cannibal noun in this way to talk about a type plant, animal, or etc. would say, know that you can also use a plural noun with the, would say, roses are my favorite flowers, but not the roses, okay? We use, uh, yeah, like in this class, sorry, I lost, uh, I lost my mind, sorry. Again, I'm gonna repeat, it says, know that, that you can also use a plural noun with the, so when we use a plural noun to talk about something in general, we don't have to use the article. We don't say the roses. We just say roses are my favorite flowers. Or you say the rose in singular, but using the article. You say the rose is my favorite flower. Okay, as in this example here. So we also use the plus a singular cannibal noun when we talk about a type of machine, an invention, and so on. For example, when was it the, the telephone invented? So we're talking about that machine, okay? Oh, sorry, that invention in this case. Well, it's a machine, but it's an invention. Number two, the bicycle is an excellent means of transportation, okay? We also use the for musical instruments here. Sure, we say, can you play the piano, the guitar, the drums? We say, the piano is my favorite instrument. We use the plus adjective. We use the with some adjectives without a noun. The meaning is always plural. For example, the rich, well, but in this case, you talk about the people uh, with this adjective. Let's say the rich, when we say the rich, we say well, what we want to mean is rich people in general. Do you think the rich should pay more taxes? And it also happens with countries. With, with nationality, sorry, we say the French, the Americans, the Americans, sorry, we say the Colombians or the Brazilians. Okay, we say, look at this example, we say we use the specially when this, with these adjectives. We say the rich, the poor, it means poor people, the all, it means all people, the young, we say young people, the blind, blind people, the the deaf, deaf people, the sick, sick people, the dead, dead people, and so far so forth, okay? So we say, that man over there is collecting money for the homeless. The homeless is homeless people. Say, why doesn't the government do more to help than employed? So, unemployed people, okay? 
So these expressions are always plural. You cannot say a blind or an employed. You have to say a blind man, an employed woman because it's an adjective. Okay? The plus nationality words, as I was telling you some minutes ago, you can use the with some nationality adjectives when you mean the people of that country. For example, the French are famous for their food. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the French people. Okay? The English are known for being polite. The English people. Okay? You can, you can use the in this way with these nationality words. The British, the, the English, the Welsh, the Irish, the Spanish, the French, the Dutch, the Swedish. Okay? You can also use the with nationality words ending in is. For example, the Japanese or when you say the Chinese. Okay? So, um, that's the way we use the article with um, the article with the, with the nationality words. You can also, okay, like in this example, with other nationalities, you have to use a plural noun and an S. The Russians or Italians, Arabs, Germans, Turks, and so forth, so forth. Okay, with other nationalities. Good. Those are some exercises that I want you to that I want you to do as well. Okay, then we might check them. I'm sorry. So, a like second part the case is summary. So, when we when we are, when we want to talk about a topic in general, we say the singular or the noun in plural, like roses, giraffes, monkeys, dogs. Okay. Um, when we want to talk about a particular machine or invention, like the telephone, the bicycle, when we use adjectives to to mean a group of people, okay, we say the rich, it means rich people, the poor, poor people, the blind, blind people, okay. And also with nationality words, as I just told you, the French, French people, the English, English people, the Japanese, the Chinese, um, and so far so forth, okay. Or the Swiss, and the Dutch, the French, the Irish. Okay, we're talking about these people, but with other nationalities, we use just plural. We say Russians, Italians, Arabs, Germans, Turks, okay. So, we're going to go back to our presentation here. Those were the specific cases that I wanted you to, to take into account. So, plural and uncountable nouns with and without the. Okay, we don't use the... We don't use the article the before a noun when we mean something in general. As I was telling you, we say I love dogs. We don't say I love the dogs, no. We just say dogs. When you talk about a noun in, in general, we just use the plural. There is no need to use the article, okay? We do that in Spanish, but not in English. We say she really likes cats or criminals should always go to jail. But we don't say the criminals, okay? But we say life can be difficult sometimes. But in this case, life is it's talking about life, like not the people's lives. It's talking about life in general, okay? So we say classical music is what's what some people like, not the classical music, okay? Because once again, I'm talking about. Um, I'm talking about a general topic, which is classical music, like criminals, cats, dogs, giraffes, phones, cell phones, homes, buildings, um, and so forth, so forth. And also, when we when we use people, please, most of students say the people. No, we don't say that. We say people. Okay, because when we talk about people, we're talking about something in general, unless that you are referring. So a group of people, in which case we use the, okay. So, um, I might make a mistake here, sorry. So it says, we use 
the article the before noun when we mean something in particular. So in this case, we're going to analyze. As you can see here, we have two ones, two twos, and two threes. We're going to analyze because we're going to compare. We say, she loves flowers. So you're talking in general. But I can also say, I love the flowers in your garden. So in this case, I'm being specific. I'm talking about particular flowers, the ones in your garden. Number two, children are very smart. Okay, this is just general. I'm saying that all children are very smart. But look at this example. It says, the children in my class. So in this case, I'm talking about children, but only the ones in my class are very smart. So I say the, because I'm being specific, particular. Number three, my friends say French people aren't friendly. Or I'd say, I'm just talking about French people. I can also say, my friends say, the French are unfriendly. Okay. Number three, the French people I know. So in this case, I say, the French people, just the ones I know, are very friendly. Okay. So this part here, this part here, and this part here means the topic particular. We say most people, look at this box here, which is, what I mean, it says we say most people, most kids, most dogs, no, the most people, the most kids, or the most dogs, okay? No, because when we say the most, we're talking about the superlative, and that's, when we say the most, there is only one, a, one thing, okay? It's very different when you say most people, than, than saying the most because we use an adjective the most for an adverb we say the most beautiful people i know blah 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 but in this case when you say most people you're not talking about the superlative you're talking about the majority okay most people most kids most dogs like 90 percent 80 percent 85 i don't know so majority of people okay can be replaced by most people not the most people Next one, geographical use of the, okay, if we're going to talk about some geographical features in, in which we have to use the article the, we say we never use the article the for continents, name of countries or cities. As you can see here, we say Asia, we say Africa, we say Europe, we don't say the Europe or the Africa or the Asia. We don't say that. We just say con continents without the article. Countries. We say Germany, France, China, Colombia, um, Brazil. Okay, we don't use the article. Cities. New York, Barranquilla, Berlin, Bogota. We don't say the New York or the New Jersey. We say just New York. I'm sorry. And yeah, we say New York or we say Chicago. We don't say the Chicago. Okay, we say just like like the name of the city without the article. But except in the ones using the words Republic, Kingdom, Emirates, and State. So in this case, when we use these words for countries, then we have to use the article. Okay, like for example, when we say the Dominican Republic, so in this case we're using the word, so we're using the word, we're using the word Republic, so we have to use the, uh, we have to use the article, the, the Dominican Republic, and the second one, the United States of America. We're using the word states here, or the United Kingdom. We're using the word kingdom. The United Arab Emirates. So in this case, we're using the word Emirates. So we need to use the article. The Republic of Ireland. So we're using the word Republic. And the People's Republic of China. We're using the word republic here in this case. So every time that we have these words for countries, republic, kingdom, emirates, and state, we have to use the article the. Also, we use the article with island groups that are in plural, okay? And no article with individual islands. 
look at here it says the Bahamas Bahamas so in this case it's Pluto the Canaries or the Canary Islands so in this case it's Pluto we say the Virgin Islands or the British yeah we say the Virgin Islands because we're talking about I okay there is a group of islands in English okay Virgin Islands okay so in this like and, in, and also sorry in the in the last one which we say the British Isles okay so I rip it again because I was like a little, a little bit distracted so we say the Bahamas the Canaries or the Canary Islands we say the Virgin Islands so you can see all of them are in Pluto and we say the British Isles okay but we say Bermuda Island, Bora Bora Island, Easter Island, okay? So we don't say that in, in Pluto because they are individual islands. Remember that we never say Iceland. We don't pronounce the S. We say I-land, okay? And we use the article with oceans, rivers, seas, and canals. Here we say the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, the English Channel, the Nile, the Amazon, the Mississippi, and the Red Sea. So when we talk about oceans, rivers, seas, and canals, canals, so we always use the article, okay? We always use the article. So, um, something else, okay, that's it. So, another feature about geographical use of the article is that we use the article with names using the preposition of, like, the, like I'm sorry, I made a mistake here. Is the Gulf of Mexico, I wrote gold, is with F, not with D, okay? But we have the preposition of here, so we use the article. We say the Bay of Naples, off, or the Sea of Japan, or the United States, off, of America. So we, we're using the preposition of in this case, so we need to use the article. Okay. And proper nouns with and without the article, the. So in this case, we have a chart, which is like a summary about proper nouns. So with some of them, we use the article and with some others, we don't use them. So we say nouns with, with the article when we talk about deserts. We say the Sahara Desert. We say many famous or historical buildings. We say the White House, for example, hotels, the Hilton, say island groups as I was telling you the Canary Islands or the Virgin Islands or the British Isles we say mountain ranges the Himalayas we say museums and art galleries we say the British Museum nationalities the French the British when we talk about the people belonging to that nationality the French which means French people as I told you newspapers the Independent the New York Times in oceans and seas, we say the Atlantic Ocean, the Pacific, and rivers and, and canals. We say the Amazon and the Nile, as I told you. Theaters and cinemas, we say the globe. But with these nouns, we don't use the article. We never use the article with these nouns. For example, airports, we say JF, JFK, we say John F. Kennedy. If we're, we say castles and palaces, we say Buckingham Palace. We don't say the Buckingham Palace, just say Buckingham. So cities and towns, Athens, for example, companies, Sony, Samsung, Huawei or Apple. Continents, as I told you, Africa, Asia. So countries, Germany and New Zealand. We say days, months, and years. Tuesday, April 2009. So, in individual islands like Crete Island or 
Bora Bora Island or Eastern Island, individual mountains, Everest, and languages, English, Cantonese. Wouldn't say I speak the Spanish, or we just say I speak Spanish, or I speak Cantonese or English. Squares and streets, we say Red Square, Oxford Street. States and regions, we say California and Wales. States and regions, okay? We say New Jersey, Texas, we say California, we say Washington, we say um, Arkansas, and, and so forth and so forth. Okay? Or regions. I, let me. Okay. Okay, yes. States and regions. Yeah, nothing is missing. Yeah, everything is here in this chart. So I think I will also send, send you this material. So no worries about it. The only way to learn this is to learn them by heart. So, but I think it's kind of easy. Okay. And here we, we got the pronunciation tips, which is the pronunciation about the article the and these two words here. But we're gonna start here. You know that we in English this sound is the voiced th sound, which is represented in the dictionaries like this with this symbol. This is a phonetic symbol here. We'll say mm. so if you put your hands here and you pronounce mm -hmm, it should vibrate okay so we say the the so we say the cat the kids the university so in this case pay attention here because we we don't say the university you might be asking or wondering teacher why if the u is a vowel yeah but the, the thing is that here we have a we have a consonant sound because U is considered in English as a semi-vowel sound. So it's not a vowel. Sometimes it is a vowel, sometimes it is a consonant. So in this case, in case like university, like username. So the U here is, it's a consonant. So we say the university, we don't say the university, okay? The. So the second one is the. So we say the apple, because the next word starts by a vowel sound. We say the orange, we say the N, and pay attention here, the R. So in this case, we have an H sound here, and we have to be careful because sometimes this H is pronounced as, as GA, and sometimes it's pronounced as mute. We say, like for example, uh, when we say humble, when we don't, we don't say humble, you don't say like you are a an humble person. We we say you're a ha humble person. But in the case of R, we don't say Howard. We say R. Okay, like in like in the word honest. We don't say honest. We say honest. So we have to be careful with this H sound and also with the U sound because sometimes it can be the, sometimes it can be the and with the H sound as well. So a n, we just pronounce this as schwa plus n. Well, sometimes we just pronounce the n sound, like an 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 apple. You know that we use this this one when we when the next word starts by a vowel sound. But you have to be careful with this things here as well with the u and the h because we say here, for example, an apple, an orange. And we say an R. So, but this is an H, an H letter, but it doesn't sound. So the word starts by a vowel sound. So as you can see here, it's not about spelling. It's about it's all about pronunciation. We say an R in interview. Okay. So, uh, and we use the which is. Well, this word can be pronounced in two different ways. You can use the schwa like a, a cat. A kid or a university or you can a university or you can also use this or pronounce this as a a can a kid a university so but I think it's longer saying like a so most of people pronounce a, a can I have a cat I have a cat or I need to go 
no, I, I register to a university. Okay, so uh, that was what I wanted to tell you about about the first grammar part of this uh, unit, unit number seven. So um, the second part, we're gonna go to the book. We're gonna go to let me see here. Okay, I want you to do the exercises here. These exercises, pages seventy-four and seventy-five, and and also okay. This part here. Okay, I want you to do these two exercises here, and also to practice. Exercise B, C, and that's it. Okay, the second part of this grammar is in the rest of speech using it as a passive reporting verb, as you can see here. But let me do something here. Yeah, like this. So, to report a generalized statement or belief, we use it plus a passive reporting verb plus a noun clause. As an indirect speech, the verb in the noun clause refers to the sense of reporting verb. Okay, this is basically using an it clause in order to talk about something that that is like like some people say or or when you want to refer to something that that is very common, okay? Like for example, it is said that that spilling salt brings bad luck. So we say it is said. It's like some people say, okay, it's totally the same. We say it was widely believed that the storm would be terrible. It was widely believed. So in this case, it is in present. So you can see here it is. Let me show you here. So we say it is, here we say it was widely, oh my God. Wait a minute. Okay. So as you can see here, we say it was widely believe that the storm would be, okay? Okay, you have to agree the tenses here. We said before the election, it had been, had been asserted that it would, people would come out to vote. Or it might be taught. So as you can see here, we're using the indirect speech, but this is the, we, we report verbs here in the passive form would be being a certain would come was well would be and would come are the, like the results so we say it might be taught that the offer is a scam scam sorry it used to be believed okay used to be believed so remember that in the passive form or in the passive voice we use the verb be plus the the past participle is verb. So as you can as you can see here, it is said is in the present. So we say was believed in the past, and we say had been asserted in the past perfect. We say might be taught, might be thought. Like here we use a uh, uh, the modal verb. Sorry, use be thought. We say it used to be used to be believed habitual past. And then the result or the consequence in the present, we just say the same present. So we say it is said that spilling salt brings bad luck. But in the past, we say it was believed that the storm would be, or it had been asserted that very few people would come, or it might be thought that the offer is a scam. So why do we use this in this case? Because we are using the model, the model here. It might be thought, or it can be believed that the offer is a scam. Okay, in the habitual past, we use, in the result, we use would bring. So, in conclusion, when we want to say, like a result here of this, in the rest of speech, so we use would be. Okay, and in the present, 
like it is said, we use simple present and with the with the with the model verbs we use it. Okay, so um, some common reporting verbs. What I'm messy here this. I'm so sorry. Okay, here common reporting verbs. We say assert, believe, claim, estimate, feel, hold, say, and think. Because remember, you can you can also report generalized statements and beliefs with people or they. As I was telling you, we say people say or they say. Okay. When we want to also to to use like how to say that it's like it's like like everybody is saying that. And you want to say that that's what the people say. So you say people say that, or um, you can also say like some people believe that, or some people think. But in that case, if you say people think or people say, then you're not using the the passive form. You're using the the, the active voice. You say people say. But if you want to use the passive form or the passive reporting verbs we say it is said or it was believed using the indirect speech with the with a need clause okay as you can see here it is said it was believed okay so uh, that's it that's the second part of this a grammar topic and I'm gonna like why this explanation in the second in the second part okay I'm going to expand the explanation in the second part of the video, but I want you to do exercise D here. Okay, start the video, do, do the exercises, and then you can check here the answers. Okay, so guys, uh, you know that your homework is the reading part, and also I want you to do the listening part at home, and then we're gonna check it. In we're gonna check we're gonna check the answers when we have our online meeting which is going to be tomorrow. So that's the end for today's class. So um, I hope that you understood everything. And, and I, want you to, I want you to ask any question that, you, that maybe you have. I know that you, that you always have some questions. So um, I want you to tell me. I want you to think about your questions. You can write in them and then just on the online meeting, you can ask me, okay? So, um, what else? Yeah, I want you to ask these questions if you have. And, and also I'm going to check the exercises for tomorrow, okay? So go to my English lab and download, please, the material and start practicing because I need you to practice that. Okay, how to use the articles and also um, using the indirect speech, using it with the reporting verbs. Okay, but I'm gonna I'm going to expand the explanation of this second second grammar topic in our second part video for for unit number seven. Okay, so thank you guys for watching the video once again, and uh, see you.